What is up guys, Zach in here and in today's video, I'm going to break down exactly my ultimate cold calling step-by-step -step guide for wholesaling real estate. In today's video, I'm literally going to show you the exact scripts, how to talk to sellers, how to get a going wholesaling real estate, and most importantly, how to become an expert cold caller, basically how to sound like an expert as a beginner from the start of this call to the end of this call. I'm going to show you exactly my step-by-step. -step. This is a free $7,000 cold calling course for wholesaling real estate. I'm giving absolutely for free today because I'm sharing everything you need to know about wholesaling real estate absolutely for free. And one of the most important ones is cold calling. All these gurus, they got five, eight, nine, ten thousand $10,000 courses alone cold calling. Guys, this is a $7,000 course I'm condensing into this video today so you can get that knowledge. Guys, I want to be the equalizer you have for wholesaling real estate knowledge so you don't have to go out here and pay a guru a bunch of money so you can learn this business absolutely for free. So if that sounds exciting to you guys, a ready to learn cold calling absolutely for free, step by step, step by step today. Literally, you can go from not knowing anything about cold calling to sounding like an expert today. Get all my free scripts, everything. My frameworks, everything. Do me a big favor. That sounds like something you guys like. Smash that like button and subscribe. Comment below your questions, guys. This is always a live video and we're ready to go today. So we are breaking down exactly how to cold call for beginners. This is my step-by-step -step training uh, picture of me with longer hair. <laughs> but guys, we're going to break it down. So if you're ready to go, if you're excited to learn exactly how to get going for wholesaling real estate, especially how to cold call the right way, smash that like button, subscribe. And guys, I, I don't think you guys are jacked up enough. So Let's cue the intro. Woo! Get the fuck out of bed, bitch. Go. Get up, get up, and they got gold. Gotta wake up, bitch, get up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. Get up. to go guys let's get it there's no better intro than this i can tell you i don't know a better intro for starting out a wholesaling real estate live stream than that because i don't think there is so guys let's get into it let's just get into it like i just i'm so excited to teach cold calling i feel like it is the greatest marketing channel out there you can start for free paid anything i'm breaking it down guys so i'm going to show you exactly how to do it for free the paid way all my scripts everything we're bringing it all today uh, so I'm excited for this one, guys. So let's get let's get it going. So number one question, you, you know, I, I get asked, and this is honestly the truth, but like, what is cold calling? You know, I, I'm bringing it, let's go from a macro perspective. You know, you've just learned about real estate wholesaling. You're just learning about this business. You're like, wait, what's going on, right? What is this business? How does it work? Super confused. Like, what is this cold calling thing, right? And let's sort of break it down. So number one, what is cold calling? In my personal opinion, cold calling is basically the art of going here and making phone calls and actively calling people and trying to find a motivated seller so, and potentially off a list someone who just wants to sell the property. Like uh, at the end of the day, we're looking to find people who want to sell the property for cash. And that's honestly, I, I could tell you. Um, but also like, let, let's break down the goal here. You know, the goal is to find someone who wants to sell their house. That's it. Think about that for a second. I'm telling you right now, if you have a different goal in mind, you're not cold calling the right way. And what do I mean by this? You just need to focus on finding people who want to sell the property. Let acquisitions deal with a lot of the qualifying and stuff. We're going to go into qualifying and everything like that, but you, you don't have to focus on closing the deal like straight up. And I think that's where a lot of people get very, very confused in cold calling. This is where they complicate the business and they end up just stinking at cold calling because they try to close the seller on the first call, right? They try the crazy opening line to get everything sold. Um, the end of the day is you got to find someone who wants to sell their house. And that's all you really got to be focusing on. You know, you're like, we're not pitching them on anything. We're, we're not doing anything. We're just seeing if someone wants to sell a house. And we'll kind of get at the end of this because I want to break down the cold calling laws, TCPA, like DN, like should you cold call the DNC list, all this stuff. I'm going to break down at the end of this conversation, 
of how to stay compliant and legal with all this. Um, also, a quick disclaimer to everybody, I'm not a lawyer, financial advisor, CPA, any of this stuff. Everything I say is for basically uh, entertainment and educational purposes only. Uh, no, lawyer says educational, uh, no, lawyer says entertainment purposes only. So I'll say that that is my legal spiel, okay? Before you do anything, go to a uh, law, go to an attorney and seek legal advice and financial advice before you do anything. If you tie your shoes, seek an attorney, uh, all that stuff, okay? Just FYI, that, that is uh, what I'm told so to say. Let's break down my cold calling process. So this is my step-by-step -step process of cold calling. If you're brand new, like watching my stuff, you're going to figure it out pretty quick. I keep things very simple. And that's because everyone compl complicates this business way too much. This business is way too complicated for the average person. And it, it drives me crazy how complicated this is. So let, let's break this down. So number one, we're going to go and find a list, right? Number two, we're going to go skip trace and organize that list. Number three, we're going to cold call the list. And then last, we're going to qualify and get the appointments. That is what we're focusing on today. That is the goal. And that is what we're focusing on. So um, also, guys, let me know in the comments. You guys can hear everything fine. Audio is all smooth and uh, all that stuff. But remember, guys, just it's four simple steps to cold calling. It just it is not that complicated. You don't have to be buying a crazy course to learn this stuff. This is all it. So let me show you this. Okay. Uh, first of all, we're going to find a list, right? Skip, trace, and organize, cold call, and then qualify and make the essay. Like I could literally put the entire cold calling process in those four bubbles. That. That's how simple this business is. Just FYI for everyone. I, I want to say this too, like what I just said, cold calling is simple. Okay. Don't complicate things. Let me repeat this one more time. Do not complicate things. <laughs> just say that to yourself before you get it going. Simple. This is a great Steve Jobs quote. I I've been, I've heard it in before, but I'm telling you right now, whew, simplicity scales, complexity fails. When you complicate this business, it is not going to be scaling. It is not going to do well. And no. Okay. So simplicity scales, complexity fails. Okay. It, it is it, it is insane how many people complicate this business. You really shouldn't. Remember, guys, I'm going to give you very simple scripts. And also, I'm just going to show you how to do simple conversation with your sellers when initially when you're doing your cold calling. You do not have to complicate this. You guys make it so like you stress yourself out just trying to cold call like this crazy way. You guys actually, it, it's so funny because everyone out here in cold calling, especially like the ones starting out, they, they have this huge stack of just, they have this big stack of just like scripts and analogies. Like, oh, what do I say if they say this way? Guys, at, at the end of the day, you really have to just simplify this business and it's going to give you the best results possible. Now we're going to break down like the, the four pillars there we, we just broke down. So let me go back into number one. Number one is finding a list. Okay. So let's talk about finding a list, right? There's two types of lists, lists in wholesaling real estate that there is, there is free lists and then there's paid list. There's no way around it. Okay. I'm just telling you, there's no way around this. There's a free list or a paid list. That's all you got to focus on. So let's talk about the free type of lists, right? So just remember with free lists and paid lists, we need to be looking for a list of sellers that might have a motivation for selling at a discount. So free list guys, these are going to be your government lists. What are government lists? This is actually my favorite type of lists are government lists. Uh, these are lists you basically get for the government. Absolutely. Absolutely for free. They are hands down uh, the best type of list to be going after. What type of list? Uh, these are code violations, water shutoffs, probates, fire damage properties, tax liens, credit card debt lien list, pre-foreclosures, Zillow for sale by owners. All this stuff is technically government lists you get from the government. Um, but actually everything before Zillow for sale by owner is not one. Um, that, that's honestly what I, I can tell you right there. Now let's talk about paid list for a second here. These are lists you have to pay for. Uh, this is basically, for example, you go to like listrei.com or zackdata.com. These are lists you have to pay for. Now, my favorite paid for list, like I cannot stress this enough, but drawing for dollars is the best cold calling list out there. I'm just going to say it straight up. Drawing for dollars is going to be the best list for you out here in wholesaling real estate starting out, especially when it comes to cold calling, SMS, anything. 
drawing for dollars is going to give you the best results. Okay. And kind of leave to pay for it, right? You got gas, you depreciate the car, a lot of stuff out there, but drawing for dollars, technically I'm not putting it free because you have to pay for a car. So maybe walk for dollars, bike for dollars, whatever you want, but uh, drawing for dollars is going to be your best paid list. Now, Let's talk about some of the higher volume lists, the best cold calling list you have to pay for if you use like a service. These are going to be, for example, a high volume list. These are going to be high equity, tired landlords, pre-probates. I uh, also pull them all in there. Remember guys in the bottom right hand corner there, freeholstling.com, we break down exactly everything you know about pulling lists, how to pull these government type lists. It's all in there at freeholstling.com, FYI. Now we're going to go back here to number two. This is skip tracing and organizing the list. So let's talk about the first part, which is skip tracing, right? Skip tracing is a way of finding a person's phone number. That, that's just the fancy term. Everyone likes to complicate it. But at the end of the day, it is just finding your phone, someone's phone number. And like all things in wholesaling real estate, there is a free way and a paid way to do it. And I'm going to show you both ways. Usually people only show you the paid way. I show you the free way because I started out broke. So I, I went through all that pain so you can actually see how to do it the right way. Uh, so how do we find someone's phone number for free? Uh, I recommend truepeoplesearch.com. That's the best one. Uh, there's Fast People Finder. You can sort of look someone's phone up like white pages. Sometimes they pop up. Uh, but probably the best one I found still is truepeoplesearch.com because you get people's emails. You get relatives information. You get a lot of really good information. So I'm still recommending truepeoplesearch.com for free. Just FYI for everyone out there, it is about 55 to 60% effective. No, it's not 100% effective for it, but it's the best we can get for free. Um, I don't know how you can complain about free skip tracing, but it, it is just understand with something free. It, it's going to take more time. It's more time intensive uh, than if you pay for it. But hey, like either you got the time or you got the money. And if you got both, you're pretty good. Uh, most people have the money. They don't have the time or they got a bunch of time. They got no money, right? There's options for everyone. Now, if we got to pay for something, use like a Zach. I'd recommend like a ZachData.com. Use whatever skip tracing service you want. But I'd rather go after one that's pretty effective and one that's not going to steal your data. So uh, ZachData.com is one of the best in the business there. They're about 75 to 85% effective. I use it because just that extra effectiveness when I'm doing tens of thousands of cold calls uh, with my VAs uh, per month, it works we're really well and it's worth it. You know, get an extra 40, $50,000 uh, deal. That's stuff we like, right? Now, you got to understand too, to a point, like it's not going to make or break it. You're paying for a list, you're getting it for free. It just makes it easier. And just to understand these are tools, okay? And don't complicate it. So now we get their phone number, right? We found their phone number. Now we got to organize the data. And organizing the data, people complicate this like crazy too. People go for like four hour, like mega live streams, just talking about data and organizing it. <sighs> what did I say in the beginning, guys, right? Like keep it simple. That is going to give you the best results. So keep it simple, guys. Okay. So how do you organize the data, right? Number one, organize your data into columns in either Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets. Whatever service you like, do it, right? Um, I prefer Google Sheets. Uh, Excel's better, but I prefer Google Sheets because it's all kind of stored in the cloud uh, just in case for your data. I got a team, so I don't like sharing it on Excel all the time. So it's just it's kind of on the cloud. I can go check in on it or organize the data. Now you just make your own columns in there. And I organize all my data by, the, by this. I have a little more than this, but just if you're starting out, this is the perfect one. Just organize by name, property address, property city, property zip, property state, Mail address, mail city, mail zip, mail zip, mail state, phone number one, phone number two, phone number three. The reason why I recommend doing it like this is, first of all, if, you, if you're brand new, don't know what mailing address is, uh, basically when you buy a property, you can have a mailing address where you get your mail to for the property. So for example, I let, let's say I own two rental properties. So I live at uh, 111 Main Street and I have a rental property at 222 Main Street and then I have a rental property at 333 Main Street, right? Obviously at 333 Main Street, I don't live there. So if I'm getting a mail about that for like my tax bill, they're not going to mail at that house because I don't want my tenants seeing it. They'll mail it to my 111. Uh, so you want to have their mail address. It helps you actually with the skip tracing on there because sometimes we buy properties from landlords. Uh, so it works very, very well. So that's how we organize it. Name, property, address, city, zip, state. Then mail address, mail city, mail zip, mail, st mail state. And then usually when you're skip tracing, you get like three types of phone numbers spit out for you if you use like zackday.com or for free at truepeoplesearch.com. Uh, so I do phone number one, two, and three. You should always cold call uh, number one first. 
uh, two and three actually goes from there too. Uh, so that's how you organize the data. I really keep it pretty simple. And then I sort of have a note column at the right of it. Uh, I'll, I'll show you sort of how I do it um, tomorrow. We, we, actually, we got a killer video for you guys tomorrow. Um, I, I'll announce that at the end of this, but it, it's, it's going to be pretty, it, it's going to be impressive. But uh, code call, like I do a color code of the notes, especially if like you're going to do it for free. Now, if you have a dialer, like we just use it in the dialer, but like if you're not using a dialer, the Google voice method, uh, this is what we do. So I put a notes uh, tab on the right. So if they don't answer, I'll put it like as yellow, right? Didn't answer. I'll color code it. If they say, no, I'm not looking to sell on like a red. If they want to sell green and they put my notes in there and then I'll put in a podio, right? Guys, everything again is at freeholsting.com on the bottom right here. And this is a pretty simple question, but this is something that a lot of people just brush over when they're talking about cold calling. So how do you call, right? I recommend starting out, even if you have, you know, $100,000 to spend, just use Google Voice. You know, like I just start out and learn the basics of cold calling, right? Just learn the basics of everything. It's going to be a lot better for you. So I recommend Google Voice starting out. It's absolutely for free. Use a local area code. Uh, so for example, if you live in New York City and you're going to go cold call in Miami, right? Miami's got a 305 area code. Uh, shout out to Mr. Worldwide, Pitbull, uh, 305. That's, you know, how everyone knows 305, obviously. But um, I would do the local code. So if I'm in New York City, I'm cold calling people in Miami. I'm going to get a 305 area code, not a New York City one. Okay. You want to be at the place you're calling. You want to be in that area code. That's going to be very important for you guys starting out. Now, there's many paid services, auto dialers, like a ZachDialer.com, but wait to get some deals first before you invest in a dialer. I do believe that a dialer is probably one of the first investments you should be making if you're starting to do a lot of cold calling deals. But I would stop until you start doing some deals, right? Like, don't complicate it. Just use a regular Google Voice hand dial. You can get, you probably won't be spam likely. And, and that, that causes a lot of issues, especially when you got the big auto dialers out there. So keep it really simple, guys. I, again, I just, if you hear me just repeating, keeping it simple over and over again, it's because I just have to reinforce that into everyone's head. Because sometimes when I do this one-on-one -on -one calls with you guys, I'm like, you're too complicating this, right? Keep it simple. This business is, it's not easy, but it's simple. What do I mean by this? Like, this is like running a 5K, okay? What's a 5 Actually, no, let's make it easier. Actually, let's make it harder, but more simple, okay? Running 10 miles. Now, that seems stressful, right? Like as someone that's ran a marathon, um, my running days are behind me, uh, but it's running 10 miles, okay? That's one simple sentence, right? It's one sentence, right? Running 10 miles. It seems very, it's very simple. The process of running 10 miles is very simple. You just go to point A to point B in 10 miles with your feet, right? It, like there's no complicated, you just go, right? Um, a lot of people in cold calling, We'll, we'll, I'll say, Hey, here, here's some running shoes, run 10 miles. And then someone will go up to me and say, Zach, what type of music should I listen to when I'm running the 10 miles? Freddie Mercury queen, or should I do like some 50 cent? Like what, what it's like, just go. Right. Um, I think this is the biggest issue people have in cold calling. It's just like, it's super simple what you got to do. Right. But people just complicate it. And it just, it drives me crazy. And that's the way I sort of look at it um, as someone that likes running. Um, it just, it, it drives me crazy. So just guys, keep it simple. Don't complicate it right. Um, now, now you become a marathon runner. We can talk about, you know, carb loading and all that fun jazz. But like, I just, guys, keep it simple, right? And this goes back to cold calling the list. And this is, unironically, actually the easiest part in the entire process. This is like running the mile. Like you're just running, right? You're just going, right? Um, it's... It's pretty fun. So I'm just telling you, like, this is the part. This is number three. Where we're actually getting the action going right. This is the easiest part. All you got to do is follow my three-step script for cold calling. That's it. Three-step, simple script. Every single, cold, every single cold call you need for your entire life can be done in a three-step script. I'm about to give it to you right now. I'm not charging you 10 grand to learn this. I'm teaching it all for free. So if you guys are excited for the script, let's break down my entire three step script right here. And this is going to be a fun one guys, because I just, you guys think it's going to be super complicated or something pretty simple. You just write down on a piece of paper and go, right? Let's break it down. So step one, are you the owner of the address? What I mean by this, right? Let's, 
let's kind of just break down the script and, and then I, I'm going to kind of do it all at once, kind of on a mock one in front of you, just so you understand it a little more. And we'll break it down. So step one, guys, are you the owner of what ring, ring, ring? Hello? Hey, hey, are you the owner of one, two, three Main Street? This is Zach, like wh whatever one you want. Like, are you the owner of one, two, three? I just, that's it. Okay. That's it. What's number two? So if they say yes, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Are you the owner of one, two, three Main Street? Yes. Step two. Are you interested in selling that property? Whoa. Now this is getting complicated, right? They say, no, I don't want to sell that. I'm not going to sell in a million years. Fine. Have a great day. Right now, if they say yes, now we go into step three. Right. And of course there's nuances like, Hey, who are you? All, all this fun stuff. Guys, just start going, right? Like I, I talked to you guys live. I'll tell you exactly. Guys, if you go to freeholsting.com on the bottom right, like there are all the objections stuff are in there. So I'm asked who you are. My name's Zach and I'm looking to buy properties for cash. Do you see how that's like, you're saying the truth and you're keeping it really, really simple. My name's Zach. I'm looking to buy properties cash. Are you looking to sell? Me and my partner are looking to buy a house for cash. It, it just, you don't complicate. Like just, you keep it simple, right? And ask the questions, guys. Like go in the comments and ask questions. I'm, I'm always here to answer them, right? So if someone says, hey, ring, 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 hello. Hey, are you the owner of one, two, three Main Street? Yes, who is this? My name's Zach. I'm seeing if you're interested in selling your property. So yes, I am looking to sell. Now we go to step three. What is step three? So step three, basically, like if I could title step three for you, not a lot of people have seen step three, but like you just, you go through freeholsting.com, like you sort of know what I'm talking about. But uh, step three is basically you gather information and you end the call. That's it. You gather information and you end the call. So let's sort of break this down a little easier. So we asked the four pillars of, of a conversation when it comes to talking to somebody. So when someone like this is all this, this is for all of wholesaling real estate. FYI for everyone that's like not doing cold calling, like you're doing, you know, direct mail or something like this is the same. Like if someone answers, if someone calls me on a bandit sign, they call me on a direct mail piece. I'm just going to go straight to step three because I'm assuming they already want to sell the property, right? You're going to ask them these four questions. These four questions is how you should basically guide the conversation. So if someone is the owner and they want to sell the property, you guide them to th these four things. And the, this has been ancient. This is ancient stuff, but you're going to basically get them on motivation, condition, time frame, and price. Okay. Let me go back here and show you exactly how I would do this, right? Let's start from the top. I'm just going to show you a mock conversation, right? Ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hey. Hello. Who's this? Hey, is this the owner of 123 Main Street? Yes. Hey, this is Zach. I just had a quick question. Hey, are you interested in selling the property? Maybe, possibly. Like, who is this? What do you do? Hey, my name's Zach. I'm actually looking to buy some properties cash in the neighborhood. Is it okay if I ask you some questions? I'm just looking to buy this house cash. Sure. Okay. Ready? Motivation. Hey, Michelle, why were you looking to sell the property? It seems like the neighborhood's pretty nice here. No, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to sell. I want to relocate or whatever, right? Or you can go into like number two condition, right? Mr. Seller, can you tell me a little bit about the property? I haven't really been inside of it, so obviously I don't know. Is it updated? How's the kitchen, the roof, AC, things like that, right? Uh, next here is going to be ring, 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 right? Time for mate. When are you looking to sell the property? Is this something you're looking to sell within a month, a week, a year, right? And then last is basically the price. Like, hey, Mr. Seller, how much do you need to sell the property for? Or what's a ballpark range you're looking to sell it for? You know, um, obviously there, like, I'm not perfect when I do a mock call. Uh, I go... I literally do two hour plus live cold calls monthly, right? And you can easily tell, like, I'm not the slickest talker at all, but I close deals. You know why? Just because I consistently take action. So let's take it from the top one more time. And I want you guys to actually go with me here. Okay. I want you guys to actually, while I'm saying this, I want you to say it with me. I know not everyone's going to do this, but if you're brand new, this is something I think you should do. Oh, that's better. Clear my throat. All right. So I'm going to do this very slow so you can follow the way I have this conversation. Okay. I'm going to do three, two, one, and I'm going to get into it. And then I want you to, uh, well, if you're watching the replay, just kind of like replay this with me, but let's kind of break it down here. So number one, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Hi. Is this the owner of one, two, three main street? Yes. Yeah, so who's this? Hey, this is Zach. I was just seeing if you're looking to sell the property. Are you interested in selling it? So number two, right? Oh, well, what do you do, Zach? I, I'm looking to buy properties for cash. 
Are you looking to sell your property for cash? See, so, like, there's different transitions for it, obviously. So, yes, I'm interested in selling. Okay, Mr. Zell, is it okay if I ask you a couple questions about it? See, if this is the right fit for me to buy for cash, me and my partner? Sure. Okay. Hey, can you tell me a little bit about the property? What, what, what do you need to know about the property? Well, can you tell me about the kitchen? Like, does it need to be updated? Is it in rental condition already? Is there anything I had to do with it? How's the roof? Right? Stuff like that. Do you have insurance on the property? All that. Like, you just go through a full list uh, of repairs on the house. How old is it? Right? And that, that's all you really got to do. So next is, so it seems like a pretty nice house or, okay, well, it needs some work, but why would you be looking to sell it then? And then just getting that right. Well, if you're looking to sell it because of X, Y, like just say the reason, when would you be looking to sell? Is this something like you have to sell within like a month or two before the auction or like as a pre-foreclosure, for example, and then you just kind of get into there, right? And then lastly is price. Well, if you're looking to sell within two months, Mr. Seller, and it seems like you need because you want to move to Georgia, when would be a perfect price for you? Like, when would you want to sell the house? And then you kind of go into, well, why do you need to sell the house? And then what price works for you? Or you, like, there's so many ways you can do it. Like, there's just there, like there's not one specific script for it. Um, but like, you just kind of get into it. So guys, let's repeat it one more time. Like I, I'm just, I'm going after it hard and hard and hard here. Let's start about motivation, condition, time, frame, price, motivation, Mr. Seller, why are you looking to sell the property? Okay. Condition. Can you tell me a little bit about the property, the roof, AC repairs and like that Time frame. When are you looking to sell the property? And then price, how much do you need to sell the property for? What's a good ballpark range that works for you? Just getting that full thing. Guys, if you want to see me like close deals over the phone, I have so many recordings of that. Uh, that it's probably going to be the best for you guys if you want to do that. Um, but it, it's all up to you which one works best for you. But this brings us back to the next part. So now we get off the phone. Okay, we're getting out of the phone call here. We're going to thank the seller. Hey, Mr. Seller, thank you so much for talking to me and getting some information here. Hey, is it okay if I just call you back? I want to gather some information online about this property and see if it's a good fit for me and my partner to buy for cash. Uh, does that work for you? And Get off the phone, say, hey, I'll call you back probably uh, later tomorrow about it. And then boom, that, that's it. That is literally my step three. It's pretty simple, right? Like it's just, um, and, and that's it. So we're going to ask some good questions here too. So uh, I can't wait to break that down uh, just in case I didn't really answer anything. And to go back into the actual call right here, uh, I, I will say, um, where is it? Where's step four? All right. Um, I, I get asked all the time too, Zach, like when, so this is something I didn't put in here um, because I, I feel like it's kind of a personal thing for, for, for everyone. But like I asked Zach, when's the perfect time to cold call, right? Like what's the perfect schedule for cold calling? And honestly, I have found that two to 7 PM local time, wherever you're calling is probably going to be the best one for you. Now, what I mean by this is if I'm cold calling, a list in California and I live in New York, I'm going to cold call 2 to 7 p.m. Los Angeles time, not New York time. So 2 to 7 p.m., that's personally where I found the best results, but honestly, it's up to everyone. So we're going to qualify the seller again and basically set that appointment if you want. That's what you're going to have to do, okay? So we're going to break down the truth, okay? So here is the honest truth. And I'm not going to gain any friends by saying this, but hopefully it helps somebody out. And that's all. That's honestly what I want. The hardest part about cold calling is just picking up the phone. Let me repeat this one more time. Picking up the phone is the hardest part. Only taking action will help. Like, only taking action is going to be the thing that's going to help you reach your goals. If you do not take action, you will not reach your goals. So you being scared of cold call is not going to help. And that's something it, it takes a long time for people to understand, but you got to take action and get your goals in life. And you're going to have to have confidence. It's not having confidence that like, you know, everything, but having confidence in your script and actually talking to the sellers is going to give you the best results. So have confidence when you talk to a seller. I just, you, ha if your seller doesn't believe in you, because confidence at the end of the day is going to just be a belief in yourself that you can help somebody out. It, you're going to get the best results, not fake it till you make it to a point, but sort of have like you sort of have to just believe in yourself even if you don't that you know go out here and help the seller out and you should have all the confidence in the world because 
you are helping a seller out and you're buying the property cash and your cash partner and you're going to do well. Right. And at the end of the day, that's all you need. You're going to have that confidence and it's going to help you out the most here. Now, this is an interesting one too. Like, so this is something I wanted to address here, uh, but kind of the laws with cold calling per se, I get a lot of questions about the law. So I sort of wanted to break it down for you guys. Uh, so you understand it, right? Um, but it's interesting. So cold calling is legal guys, FYI. Realtors call, cold call, uh, politicians call. Uh, a huge part of the economy runs on cold calling, okay? Politicians, believe it or not, cold call daily. Okay, they, they try to get fundraising. So what they do is pretty legal. Uh, okay, like cold calling is not, everyone thinks cold calling is illegal, right? Now, it's legally fine for a wholesaler to cold call. Now, there's some things around it, but so I get asked all the time, you know, the do not call registry, right? You know, should I be calling the do not call registry, right? There's a lot of creative ways to get around it, right? There's all this stuff, guys. FYI, I'm not telling you what to do. Okay, just FYI. I am not telling you to cold call the DNC list to not to do it. Um, if he didn't know someone was on the DNC list, right? It's it's kind of like so it, the way cold call and the laws work. It's very weird to a point. So if I, for example, you know, I, I have a like I you know I'm working out and then like one of my buddies I haven't seen in high school in like seven years like comes out to me. And says, hey, man, I haven't seen you. Let's play basketball. And he gives me like the wrong number, right? And I and I call that person and say, hey, you ready to play basketball? And the person says, I don't know who you are. I'm on the DNC list. I'm suing you. Like, I just, like, you have to understand to a point, like, that it's, it's very weird the, the way the laws are. I'll read the laws out to you, and you can understand how they work. Uh, so this is the DNC list, the Do Not Call Registry, basically from the FCC. Uh, the do not call, this is basically a screenshot I have of it, but uh, the national do not call registry gives you a choice about whether to receive bandit signs or not. Okay. So the DNC list gives you a choice from whether to receive telemarketing calls or not. So remember guys, the DNC list is to avoid telemarketing calls. So what is the definition definition of a telemarketing, right? What, what is telemarketing to a point? So according to FCC part 64 miscellaneous rules relating to common carriers, subpart L restrictions on telemarketing, telephone solicitation, and face smile advertising, uh, section 64.1200 delivery restrictions. I have the full legal schmiegel here because everyone tells you cold calling is illegal. You can't do this. I just give you the law because I think you guys are smart enough to read things. I think you guys can read. Um, so I think you guys are smart enough to read on the law and see this is basically from the FCC.gov. Now, you're not going to jail. It's not illegal to cold call, right? But sometimes they got fines and stuff. It's against TCPA. So you got to understand how the law works. So this is the definition of telemarketing. And I, I want you guys to read it and so understand it. This is the FCC's definition of telemarketing. So the term, this is uh, section 10. I think it's page eight. Um, I, I have the link right here. If you just want to like pull it up yourself, screenshot this, whatever or look up the full code or whatever, guys, I'm not a lawyer, legal advisor. I'm just showing what the law says. Uh, so you understand it. The term, this term FCC, uh, the term telemarketing means the initiation of a telephone call or message for the purpose of encouraging the purchase or rental of, or investment in property goods or services, which is transmitted to any person. Let me read this one more time. This is uh, basically the initiate initiating a telephone call or a message for the purpose, so for example, of encouraging the investment. So basically, the encourage of the per, basically the encouraging of the investment in a property or goods or services. So if you're calling somebody to encourage them to purchase real estate, um, you're encouraging them to rent real estate if you're encouraging them to invest in a good or service or encouraging them to purchase. Now I this the law is really weird. You know, this is very vague how they sort of do it. Cold calling for wholesaling. What are we doing? We are calling somebody and seeing if they're looking to sell something, right? Are they looking to sell? Okay. We are not calling somebody and seeing if they want to sell my vacuum cleaner. Okay. This is not the founder, I'm selling vacuum cleaners, ice cream machines, right? 
I'm calling people seeing if they are looking to sell their house uh, to, to a point. Now, this is encouraging the investment in a property. Um, could it technically be the purchase or the rental of a property, right? Um, it's very weird the way they do it. Now, you can have every lawyer out here give you their definition of it, right? Now, if I'm encouraging somebody to sell their house to me, that could be a point too, but like it's not specific. Sometimes it's specific in there, sometimes it's not. But like this is basically the only thing we have on it. What's telemarketing if you should cold call the DNC list or not, right? Um, everyone's got their own thing. Realtors usually don't call the DNC list, but they actually do all the time. I am technically on the DNC list and I probably get two realtors cold calling me a day. Um, pretty fun, but you know. What if someone has a for sale by owner co uh, realtor co calls that, but the for sale by owners on the DNC list, right? Like it just, it, it's all in there. Just understand that intent's probably a big part. Um, if if you make your own DNC list, I think this is something people should do. Um, lawyers always say this for me too. It's all, a lot of it's intent too. I don't intend on co calling the DNC list. I never do. You know, if, if I find out someone's on the DNC list, I don't want to co call them. I, I don't. Okay. If I have my own list, an internal DNC list for myself, and if someone calls me and if I if our team calls and says, take me off your list, they're they're off the list, right? I don't want to bother somebody who's gonna be like deal with it, right? I might send them direct mail piece, right? But I, I'm not gonna cold call them, right? So at the end of the day, if you can show that you have your internal DNC list and they already said no, hey, take them off the list, right? But like you gotta look at the law there and just make your own decision. And I, I think you're all you you all are adults on this, right? And you see it now. Are you violating TCPA law? TCPA law. If you have like a dialer, like for example, it won't even let you dial after like cold calling times. I think it's let me uh, let me get the official thing. I didn't write it on here, but I'll, I'll find the official times. Uh, technically, it's against the law to quote unquote call during certain times, uh, TCPA times. I'll, I'll pull that up for you guys here. TCPA times, uh, you cannot cold call um, local time. It says here, let me let me share my screen. Uh, it says 9 p.m. to 8 a.m. No, 9 p.m. to 8 p.m. Wait. The hour arguably place to increase cost burden. Uh, federal is 8 a.m. Uh, to 9 p.m. of the party's local time person. Now, I'm not... I'm not going to like get like in the nitty gritty of this to, to a point, but like um, now this isn't legal advice, like do it all you want, but like all, all these law places are kind of saying it. Uh, do not cold call before 8 a.m. or after 9 p.m. And that's pretty much my two to seven. Like that's pretty in line to that. So like if you, if you, if you listen to what I say, <laughs> you're going to be fine. Right. Like just, that's all I could say. Uh, Michelle says, thanks Zach for the DNC info. That was gold. Cool. Nobody explains it. No one brings the laws. No one reads the law. Guys, why do you think I do you think I read the law and I know all this stuff because I want to teach it to you guys? No. <laughs> okay. I do because I run a cold calling business and I under I want to understand the law to see if I'm breaking the law or not, or like everything with that. I talk to lawyers all the time with it for Florida, other states I do. So I know the law. So I'm just gonna show you what I know. I do it for me for my own business, right? Like this is the stuff I do when I'm working. Um, this is like me doing lives and stuff. This is not me working, right? This is just me having fun, right? It's kind of a hobby. So to a point, it's a hobby because you don't make money. So uh, I'm telling you guys right now, it just in wholesaling real estate specifically, um, cold calling should be fine, right? It, it's intent to a point. It's how you make your own internal DNC list. You can check for the DNC too. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can do on there, but um, yeah, that, that's basically it. So let's kind of get in the portion where we talk to somebody. Like, let, let's talk to these people over here. Let, let's answer some questions we got here and see how I can help. Rios asks here, uh, how old are you? I am 22 years old. I've been wholesaling real estate for five plus years and I run seven figure operation teaching wholesaling real estate for free because I make so much money wholesaling real estate. I don't have to sell you a guru course. And that's pretty cool, I think. Um, no one else is willing to do it. So me and Rick are the only ones who are actually willing to do it. So, hey, whatever, right? 
That means you guys aren't going to be catching me going on a mastermind. This is, uh, you're not going to be catching me speaking on a stage to sell you guys. Um, I don't speak on stages. I don't have anything to sell you. I literally don't see the point of flying across the country just to talk to boost my ego. I don't do any of that stuff, guys. I, I'll do this for fun. I'll, I'll give some information online for you guys on, on how to wholesale. But like, I get asked, Zach, why don't you go to this mastermind? Why don't you speak at this one? I, I why? I just. Why, why am I going to spend three grand just to fly fly across the country just to go speak at your thing and that you're charging people to learn this information for? I just it drives me crazy. I, I don't get it, but hey, whatever, right? I'm 22. Wait, Rich. Oh my gosh, I thought for a second we had Mister Self Defense in the house, uh, but we do not. We've got Detroit's finest protecting our uh, live stream today. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Let's uh let's let's go over some questions here and see how I can help. Uh Midnight says I've been trying to catch every live, but I work two to eleven, so my job sometimes gets upset. Yeah, I get it. Um watch on your free time, I guess. I don't know why you're working out. Hey Kimmy, do you work with anyone or do you do it yourself? I'm not Kimmy. All right. Um <laughs> Jason's got to go in, you know, politicians put up bandit signs, which don't get taken down, but mine gets taken out right next to the political bandit signs. Um, I think you should legally change your name to We Buy Ugly Houses and your middle net, your last name and your phone number, and then run for Senate. You know, We Buy Ugly Houses, one 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 three 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 three. 333 you know, the independent party, right? Like uh, the whole selling party, right? I say, Mr. Seller, most sellers don't worry about the EMB. They care about selling the property. Exactly. Zach, appreciate it. I uh, love the Kobe. Uh, Zach, if you're doing double closing, can you still get the seller to pay closing costs? No, have the cash. No, you're going to have to pay the closing costs on that one. So John says, picking up the phone indeed is the only fear. Good truth to hear. John, if you're scared to talk to somebody, you have to be, you have to think about, Think about this for a second. Your fear of being broke, your fear of being at where you're at now, your fear of living the same life you're at financially or being where you're at right now has to be greater than your fear of cold calling. Until the fear of not cold calling is greater than the fear of cold calling, you're not going to do well. What I mean by this is why I started sticking bandit signs out when I was a kid at 17 years old for wholesaling and made 100K before I graduated high school. My fear of being a manager at that grocery store, making 50, 60K a year, working 60 hours a week, just, you know, giving my 10 vacation days a year, living that nine to five life, not being able to live the life I deserve, not taking care of my family, not being able to financially provide for my entire, for my fa like for my entire family, you know, um, I knew my family deserved a better life. Uh, I knew my family was pretty much well set, but like my future family, right? And just. Uh, I knew I deserved better for myself and I was not worth eight twenty five an hour. And my fear of being at that same position for the rest of my life was way, my fear, basically at the end of the day, my fear of being broke was so huge. I didn't care about what a seller would say to me meanly over the phone. I was more scared of being broke the rest of my life. Paycheck to paycheck is not what I deserve. And that was the greatest decision I've ever made in my life. John, you have to make a decision for yourself. That's all I got. I only at the end of the day, that, that's all I got to tell you. So Zay Marie says, how do you present yourself to cash buyers? When I talk to a cash buyer, basically present myself, Hey, I'm a wholesaler. I'm looking to assign properties, basically selling these contracts for deep discounts off the actual market value. Are you looking to buy any more properties for cash? And Hey, I sell them for a discount. That'd be pretty cool. That means you'll make a lot more money on these deals. And you don't have to pay a realtor fee, right? Like that, that's the way I look at it. All right. Cody uh, says, Hey Zach, big issue having that my probate foreclosure dockets is the, the address isn't disclosed under the paperwork. It's either described a lot for as the property. That's fine, Cody. What you have to do is if you get the name on the docket. So think about this for a second. If John C. Smithfield, the third is deceased. Look up John C. Smithfield on the property appraiser. Then the address will pop up. That's ba that's basically it. Uh, how do you make an offer without seeing it? 
I mean, it's, it's virtual wholesaling to a point, you know. Nice and direct. Guys, I like to keep it very nice and direct. Um, I, I'm telling you right now, just it's hard for me to lie, right? And if a seller knows I'm lying to them, it's very obvious. And just, I can't, like, I can't act out of character if I'm lying to, I, I, I think I can act. I think I can act, right? I, I think I'm a little Leonardo DiCaprio, but I can't really act too much when I'm lying, especially to a seller. So I, I don't lie. And being nice and direct is the best way for me, I found. Uh, what's up, Kurt? Do you always use the words cash offer or is it just an offer just as good? I'm not a realtor just seeing if you're looking to sell your house. Um, I say cash offer just so it's just, I don't explain. I'm, I'm buying it cash, right? But it, it's what I'm feeling in the moment. I just, it's, you know, this is the high quality sales training Zach gives. Whatever you're feeling, just say it. <laughs> but that... <laughs> At the end of the day, that's how to find, like whatever just slips off the tongue to a point, cash off, you're looking to sell. That's really what, what, what I get. So I uh, love this. Keep it simple. Awesome. Cut the phone to the ear in full character. <laughs> love it. Uh, take your role play calls. Awesome. Zach, appreciate it. Uh, so Michelle's got a good question here. Um, finding true seller motivation has been my challenge uh, so far. Finding somebody's true seller motivation is simply just building rapport and asking the same question over and over to a point. So if you're talking to a seller and they say, "Hey, I'm looking to," uh, this is a, "Hey, I'm looking to sell my house." Well, why are you looking to sell the house? Well, I'm just looking to sell it, guys. There's always a motivation why someone's looking to sell a house, right? Either like it's either, you know, they lost a job. Maybe it's embarrassing. The reason why maybe they're in foreclosure, right? The one thing about true motivation is if you actually look at the person's name and the address on the property appraiser and see if that should pay their taxes, actually look at them on the public records. Maybe they got to lean on the property and maybe just kind of reverse it without asking. But if you just talk to someone and build that rapport, think of the Ford method, family, occupation, recreation, dreams, and you just sort of build that connection more and more. Trust me, it'll reveal itself or the title will reveal itself. But true seller motivation to the point you can ask, a seller could lie about it, right? But most of the time, they're pretty much upfront with you. So if you want to find why a seller is truly motivated to sell the property, either ask them. If it's not embarrassing, they'll straight up tell you. And if they don't want to give you the motivation, really, oh, I just want to sell it for the most money. Like if they say that, then boom, that's a motivation, right? But <sighs> it's weird, you know, and if they're just not being upfront with that, they're probably don't want to like a motivated seller would most of the time tell you why they're looking to sell. So that's usually a red flag. But if you really want to find the true motivation, just build that report and ask, or just look at the property on public record. And that's probably the best way to figure it out. Do I need to do anything with a more? Yeah. Go to freeholstling.com. We'll sort of break down exactly how to do that the right way. Um, let's make this blue. I don't know. I'm feeling blue. Oh yeah. That's way better. Good luck. Heat tonight. Let's go. I'm excited. I'm telling you, someone's been listening to my, uh, you know, I do these live streams. I usually two hours. I start at five to seven. I tell people, Hey, why are you starting these basketball games at seven? Sometimes I get off the streams at 7.05, right? This isn't fair. And people have been listening to me, you know, because if they start this, this game at five, I'd be having, I'd have a, I'd have the TVs on the side here showing the game. I'd just be like, yeah, I will, what question you got? But 8.30, I like it. You know, I can do my streams. I can go longer on the streams if I want and still talk to you guys. So, oh yeah, heat and four. Let's get it. It's going to be seven. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for, it. uh, I like to see Zach set up a dial and show how it works. Uh, we'll, we'll set that up. Let's see here. Can we organize data in Podium instead of Excel or spreadsheet Ke guys? Keep your organization in Excel Podios for qualified sellers only. And remember that.
Lots of value as always. Thank you. Melvin says, I have a small for sale by an owner list with two motivation, a hundred plus a day on market with a price. With two motivation, a hundred day plus on the market with a price cut. Okay. I don't know what the question is though. Talk to him, right? Hey, Zach, uh, Ulysses says, off topic, what if my seller isn't the state where the property it does, does it affect the closing of the title company? Can it be done online? So Ulysses here, your title company in virtual wholesaling should be where the seller's at. So if you live in Florida and your deal is in Georgia, well, Georgia is an attorney state, but for, for example, for example here, like let's say, let's say you use this another random. So let's say you live in New York and the title company is, so let's say you live in New York and you're virtually wholesaling out of there. You should use the title company where the seller lives in. So if you're in New York right now, do a Florida one, because if your seller lives in Florida, do the, do the title company in Florida. It's always going to be best. And every state's a little bit different with the contracts and everything. So I would use the title company that is where the seller is virtually. Melvin says, I'm terrified of cold call, but I made four calls just now. Taking action is going to be the fastest way to defeat your fear in cold calling. I know it's not sexy. I know it's not the the quick answer for you, but taking action is going to give you the biggest destruction of your fear because once you start cold calling more and more, you're going to realize, hey, this isn't too bad. And like, why am I so scared of cold call? And you figure it out that just there's really nothing to be fearful of. If someone says something mean to me, right? I always have the mindset of, hey, my mama thinks I'm cool. My dog thinks I'm a pretty rad person. I don't really care what John in Mississippi thinks about me. Okay. I don't care if they say something mean about me. I really don't care. My mom thinks I'm cool. My dog thinks I'm cool. What more can I want in life? Right. I mean, have that mindset and you're going to be fine. I, I get so much hate everywhere on online of all the social media and stuff I do. Guys, just think about like if I let all the hate comments get to me, I've never posted a video ever. I just don't care. You know? And my biggest haters are these gurus. You, th you really think I'm going to let a guru end me? You think I'm going to let a, be scared of a little guru? Are you kidding me? Come on. It, it's hard to respect a guru when they go hands and knees on... Uh, it, it, I'm not going to mention it, but it's, it's, it's hard to be scared of a guru when they go hands and knees like, buy my course, please. Buy my course. Oh, oh, buy my course. It's sad. Uh, I assume that was sarcasm. This seems quite simple to me. Let the attorneys handle the paperwork and I'll collect the check. Uh, you handle the paperwork. Uh, this video is on YouTube. My boy, Zach, don't mess around. I don't mess around, man. I I'm telling you right now. I'm here to change people's lives. John says the, be the better intro would be something rock from the 80s. My opinion, only I know. <laughs> um, 80s rock would be cool too. I love some 80s rock. <laughs> Uh, watching your cold videos today. Awesome. Thanks for making this video. Really looking uh, awesome. Just got my car repoed. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Sorry. All right. Let's see here. All right. Let's see what the questions we got. Let's, let's go from the top here. All righty. Uh, Quit and shop says, enjoyed watching you and your dad. Uh, can you go over how you calculate the numbers and making offers? So my basic formula for calculating an offer, especially with a motivated seller on a deal is just if the ARV is under 120,000 do ARV minus repairs multiplied by 70%. Now if ARV is over 120,000 do ARV minus repairs multiply 83%. And then if it is over about 400 K ARV do around 85%. Go to freeholcing.com. It's usually all in there. Josh got to go in here. You know, cold call random people until you're comfortable calling people. They're all going to yell at you at the perfect practice. Oh yeah. I, if you're too scared, I always just uh, cold call 50 Zillow for sub by owners and just have a conversation. They ain't going to go well, but uh, there's no problem in it. Ivan, what's up, Ivan? How do I deal with fire damage properties? Is it simple or difficult? Fire damage properties is a fun one. You know, it's property that basically got burned to a crisp, right? These 
these properties usually get they get their insurance check. So they already got their money. So it's not like the end of the world for them, right? And they basically have a burnt piece of property. Usually goes how you deal with fire damage properties is you just get the lowest price you can and you kind of just basically find a builder. And they're pretty easy to find. You cold call the cash sales, they're pretty simple. And you just cold call the firehouses to find where the properties went on fire. Some really good deals are like, let's say the kitchen went on fire and only that's part only that part really need repairs. That's a motivation someone just wants to get rid of the property and it works out pretty well. Uh, that's how we deal with fire damage properties. Uh, let's see here. If the seller doesn't let me inspect the property until EMD is submitted, can I back out of the contract? Sure. Submit the EMD though. Like if it's a hundred bucks, just submit the hundred bucks, do your inspection, get out if you don't like it, you know? Yeah, Melvin, that, that's a fine list to do. Have you heard of Yuma? Oh yeah, I heard of Yuma. I got my really, uh, I got my first really mad prospect yell at me today looking for the next one. Oh yeah, Where are they gonna, they're going to go to Sweden and scream at you. You're fine, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, 400 calls today, still looking uh, for that yes. All right. Love it. My mom and dog love me. That's all that matters. Hey, all that matters, right? Uh, Minerva says, what do you, what, di what did your first two years in business operation look like versus current? My first two years, I basically went from making hundred K to around a quarter million dollars uh, to year two. And then year three, about 500 K and then basically scaling up to a million per year. That's basically how my full operations went while starting out. But first year one was just basically in high school, just putting bandit signs out Year two more virtual to cold calling and then basically scaling with a Rick year three and four and then five are right now. That's basically how my first two years in wholesaling was basically just focused on talking to people in person and then getting contracts, selling it and making a ton of money. Pretty simple. Didn't really pay for too much stuff. Kept it very, very stupid simple because that's the way you should be doing it. Uh, Albert says, I've been trying to close some deals, but no dice said I'm going to try to do it on market in San Antonio, but we have double, we don't have dual agency in Texas. I'm not a big fan of on market properties. I'm just FYI. Uh, what do you think about wholesaling in Seminole County? Yeah, that works pretty well. Let's see here. Uh, Zach, when sending the contract to title company or attorney, uh, what should you tell the attorney or questions you should ask? Well, all you really got to ask is, hey, Mr. Seller. I'm mean, sorry. Wait. Oh, ta okay. Hey, Mr. Title Company, can you just look over and see if this is something you would like if I get it signed, if I was doing an assignment of contract? Pretty much basic. Like I just, I don't complicate it. Keep it very simple. Uh, Supreme G says, do buyers usually give you the asking price for the property? If not, what's the best recommendation? If you want to pull the price out of the seller, you basically just got to say, hey, Mr. Seller, what price are you looking to sell the property for? And they're like, oh, you tell me, right? Well, there's a couple options out there. You can do the volley. Well, Mr. Seller, if you don't know, I mean, what what would work for you? Oh, I don't know. And then you can even do like the dollar, just keep volleying from there or use the dollar strategy. Say, Mr. Seller, would it be okay if I bought your property for a dollar? And they're like, of course not. Well, would you take a dollar? No, I'd not take a dollar. Well, obviously you have a price in mind then. And then you basically go $2, $2, oh, 40000 And then boom, you get the price. That's a quick tip I use to get a price out of the seller every time. Can a buyer submit earnest money at the close of escrow? No, get earnest money. No, make sure you get the earnest money up front. Um, yeah, that'd be a bad cash buyer. Let's see here. Where are we at? Let me see this. Can I try to get my, where am I at on this? There we go. Uh, no one-on-ones tonight. Just answering the questions for everyone here. All right. Uh, what are you looking for if you pull the arrest records? More so they need bail money or need a sell due to being locked up for a, 
for a while in the near future. I mean, that's pretty bad arrest you're looking at. So the question is, how do you pull arrest records? To pull a arrest record, just go to the sheriff's office and just call. You, you won't get in trouble calling them and say, hey, can I have a list of all the arrest records they've had for the past month? Just get a Google sheet. It's literally just a government list. Like, that's it. It's it's really not complicated. You, you Sometimes the website will actually even post them on there. Some counties do. Just ask for it. You're not going to get in trouble for saying it. As a private taxpaying citizen doing private research, you'll pull it. Just ask or just go in person and ask. They won't arrest you for it. I promise you. You're just getting a list. They are. You are a taxpaying citizen and that is a government entity. You have a right to that information. So their motivations range. A lot of them go to jail for like really small stuff like from the deals we do. I, I'm not dealing with like crazy people. Like I'm not calling them crazy. Like I'm not dealing with like insane crime. You know, we're, we're not dealing with treason here, right? <laughs> so no. Uh, did you tell them how you got their contact information? For example, list pendants, did you mention? So if somebody asks you, hey, how did you get my contact information? I always just put it like good cop, bad cop. I put the bad on my partner. Oh, my partner actually gave me a list of people that might be looking to sell the property. Are you looking to sell it? If you put the problem and the anger to the partner, they can't be mad at you. It's good cop, bad cop. Use that method. Oh, the marketing department or my partner gave me a list and just blame it on them. You'll be fine. Uh, Jorge says, hey, Zach, Jorge here. What's the best way to come up with the rehab price with such a hot market? So if you want to find repairs, uh, go to freewholesaling.com. We kind of have our little charts there, but really figure out what the cost of things are, like flooring, AC, roof, just, I mean, they usually have prices and you can sort of look them up online and just sort of guesstimate to a point. You don't have to be perfect at it. Heen six. I like it. I like it, Aiden. That's a good take. I uh, enjoyed watching your dad. Can you uh, go or did that? Gotta sell it needs a lease back. Anyone have a wholesaler friendly lease back agreement? I don't like the lease backs. I always avoid those things. If seller doesn't want me to sorry, answer that one. Love Live Nick says, What are you drinking? I am drinking. Chamomile tea. Tea with Zach Ginn today. Love it. And then water. Usually I just drink coffee, but chamomile tea. Cap that. Chamomile tea. I gotta go fishing tomorrow, so I, I can't have any caffeine. Okay, so unfortunately, no caffeine this late. Watch my game, go to bed, fish in the morning. But, uh, Janine uh, says, when you're virtually wholesale, do you tell the seller that you are out of state? Since you don't lie, what do you tell them? So if you are virtually wholesaling and a seller asks you, are you local? Tell the truth. No, I don't live in the state, but me and my, but me and my partner do. Don't lie. I, I just, I hate it when virtual wholesalers lie about this. I, I know some gurus out here tell you to go lie. Say the truth. You, you, you'll never catch up on your lies on this and you'll never go far this. Say the truth. If you say it with confidence, your seller's not going to have an issue with it because your cash buyer is going to be local. So there won't be any problem with it. Drives me crazy. When, like, it drives me insane when people lie like that. It, it just, it makes no sense to me. Uh, Jarrett says, when I send the cash buyers the assignment of, con when I send the cash buyer the assignment contract, do I put the amount I have the house under contract for before or after he signs? Uh, before. They're buying your contract, so they should get your assignment agreement. So, Jared, you should always give your contract, like a copy of it, to your cash buyer before they sign. Because an assignment of contract is you selling the contract. What if you put a crazy clause in there that you agree to buy it for a dollar, and then they get like they get like a thousand dollars back for the rest of their life free. You could write that in the contract, right? And you would never, and the cash buyer technically would never know because they never got a copy of the contract. The cash buyer needs to see what the contract you wrote because they are buying that contract from you. That's it's like buying a car without looking at it or test driving it. Here's a mystery car, right? It's just they have to see it. And if your cash buy, if your cash buyer is worried about what price you have under contract for, it's not a good cash buyer. 
They should care about the price they're buying it for. That's it. And I know you're like, it's okay if they're upcharging you. That's the point of capitalism. Okay. You're up. Of course you're, you're charging for the cash buyer. There's a fee in between there. Hosum, what is up? Uh, what do you what do you do if the seller asks for proof of funds that I don't have a cash buyer ready? I had this problem before. So you can always get a proof of funds from somebody. I usually just find a cash buyer instead. In this situation, I would probably just find a cash buyer. Probably take me three hours to find a really good cash buyer to get, get their proof of funds that you can use. That's it. Like just co call the four rents in your area. If you want to find a cash buyer like really quick, go to Zillow, go to the four rents, call these people and say, Hey, I'm looking to sell some more properties. Are you looking to buy any more properties for rentals? Yes. Qualify and get the proof of funds. Boom. You got a qualified cash buyer. That is hands down the quickest way to find a cash buyer. Hey, Zach, I was just curious if I should be reaching out to a local real estate attorney near me to make sure the contract for your course will be work in Michigan. So your contract should be working in Michigan. I always recommend everybody when you're starting out, put your contract, send your contract to a title company and just see if the contract's good enough with them. Most of the time, it's not even the state's laws. It's just the title company specifically might like your contract or might not. Just ask, just ask them, hey, title company, will this contract work for an assignment of contract and for wholesaling real estate if I do that? They'll give you a yes or no. Usually have a, they, they'll have their own attorney look at it for you. It's like a free attorney. It's perfect. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Palatka, Florida is fine. I, I don't. I mean, it's kind of small, but nothing crazy. So I asked an interesting question here. Um, let's see here. Uh, we'll take some off of YouTube really quick. Um, Who's supposed to pay for the title search and the title fees? So title should be paid from the cash buyer. You're not paying for title. The cash buyer is paying for title and they're always going to be paying for title here. If your seller says, oh, I have a title company. Let's use my title company. No, I'm paying for title because you and your cash buyer partner are paying for the title. Make sure the cash buyer knows they're paying for title. If you go to my, if you actually just go out here and use my contract, it already says explicitly that the buyer is paying for title and the cash buyer specifically in the assignment of contract. Uh, Ariana says signing up for the June challenge right now. I know I might be crazy, but I have been saving for living expense for eight months. So I quit my job to wholesale full time before I got even one deal. Um, sure. Awesome. Like, Hey, that brings you closer to wholesaling success. So I'm not going to demonize it. Hey, you're doing it right. Go after it. Right. I just, you burn the bridges. That's awesome. I'm not encouraging everyone to do that, but like, Hey, that's something you want. Sure. You know? Like if you got kids and like family to feed, then maybe it's different, but like if you're ready to go, just go after it, right? Let's see here. So I kind of know what I'm doing, but worried about pulling the trigger. I have a list of properties in my market in Lincoln, Nebraska from Batch Leads. I don't know. I'm scared to pull the trigger. Well, if not you, then someone else will do it and make their own money. Just do you and your family want to be blessed with wholesaling or do you want someone else's lives to be blessed from it? You got to make that own decision for yourself, my friend. That's the way, I mean, that's the way I look at it. Love the fear of your life status with the fear of picking up the phone. I, one is a lot more scary than the other. Everyone says, oh, what if the, the bad part about wholesaling real estate, right? What if you fail in wholesaling? Regret's the ugliest thing in the world. Uh, like regret sucks and you do not want to have regret. I can tell you right now, I I, I can go, I put my head in the pillow tonight. I have no regret of what I've done in my life. You know, I I got no regrets and th that's the way you should be living your life. Uh, a lot of people don't look at it from this perspective, but the biggest risk you can take is not taking the risk because being at where you're at right now might be a bigger risk because... You're risking that potential millions you could be making not wholesaling real estate. So everyone says wholesaling real estate's risky, right? No. What's risky is never taking the chance. Jim Rohn says it best. 
life is the riskiest thing you can do. You're not getting out of life alive. Okay. We're all, we're all, we're all not living. Uh, we're not all living uh, forever. So life's risky, right? You're not getting out alive. So just take the risk. Like if it's something that you feel, you feel like you can do, if you feel like it'll change your life forever, go in wholesale real estate. You don't have to quit your job. You can do it as a side hustle starting out too. You don't have to like burn all your bridges. You know, you, you can do part-time wholesaling too. I just, if you have like three, four, five hours in the day, you, you know, you get some less sleep. You don't watch Netflix. You can wholesale real estate. There's no excuse. Go after it, guys. I just, it drives me crazy. Darwin uh, says, my fear is not finding a cash buyer if I were to lock up a deal. Darwin, seriously, go out here, co call the for sale by owners, find a deal, then co call the for rents. You're fine. Like, I just, there are so many cash buyers right now, especially in this market, that you're going to be fine. There, there's so many. Co call the cash sales, you're fine. Just, there's so many ways to find cash buyers, Facebook groups. Guys, I did a live stream where I pulled 250 cash buyers in under two hours, absolutely for free. It's all at freeholsting.com. And I'm just telling you right now, like this is the stuff you got to be doing to actually get success. So you should not have a fear of finding a cash buyer because finding a cash buyer is way easier than finding a deal. So Chad, we're, we're going to add this on too. You know, should you have a buyer already lined up for finding a seller? No, find the deal. Like if you have a deal, you can use that deal to market to people on Facebook. Like if you want, like you don't have to market on Facebook, but that's another way to find a seller. Uh, it's not a Tony Robbins theory. That's a Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn, um, he gets, uh, Tony Robbins gets a lot of stuff from Jim Rohn. I love Tony Robbins. Um, one theory I love of Tony Robbins, I'll tell you, is you underestimate what you can do in the short amount of time. So you underestimate what you can do in the short time span, but you overestimate. No, sorry. You overestimate what you can do in a short time frame, but you underestimate what you can do in a long time frame. And this is pretty much to a T of what I do in business. Sometimes I have a goal for like a year of how much money I'm going to make. And maybe I overestimate it. But if I look at like a five or 10 year horizon, I am way over what I could have ever even possibly imagined. Like five years ago, if I was making 200,000 a year, that's like an amazing goal for five years. That's seven figures, guys. It's crazy. All right. Zach, I've been trying to wholesale vacant land in surrounding zip codes in my area, but the going rate for a single family lot, 0.65 is 55K. Should I find a different area? Am I good? You're fine. It's Guys, I think a lot of people get this confused in wholesaling real estate. It's not about the price of real estate, how you make money. You make money off the difference of the contract price and the cash buyer price. You can make $50,000 on a property that is worth $100,000. You can make four thousand dollars on a deal that is locked up for five hundred k. You sell it for five hundred. You sell it for five hundred and five thousand dollars. It doesn't matter the price of the asset that you have under contract. It's about the assignment fee. Focus more on making the spread than the actual price of the deal. And like, if it's a market that's hot or not, it's more about just making the spreads. Uh, Donovan says, Zach, I've been using my number to cold call. Should I switch to Google Voice or continue with my number? Uh, use Google Voice. It, you just you want to have a local area code. You want to record the calls. You want to make sure you have your voicemails all set up. Uh, I definitely recommend that. Um, yeah, or you, know, you use a dialer if you want to. But if you haven't got a deal, Google Voice. You know, then you get like a Zach dial or something. Like if you want to start scaling it, but not right now. Um, have you done any uh, deals from reverse mortgages? I do not like reverse mortgage deals soon now. So as what dialer is the easiest, zachdialer.com is my favorite cold calling dialer. You can record the calls with my teams. Uh, Zach Dialer is the best one. You get a seven day free trial, try it out. But there's a million other ones out there. Mojo is one I started out with. Uh, call tools is great. So many great ones. Uh, Joseph said, I made my first cold call last night on a house that was for sale by owner and found it was under contract already, but to check back Friday if they do not close on Thursday. Joseph, call back, man. You're taking action. I love, I'm telling you right now, you have so much courage. Like 
you did the hard part, Joseph. You actually went out here and you cold called. Hats off to you, man. Can that be taken on my assignment fee? Actually, yes. For double closings, it depends on the title company. Yes, it can. So Evan says, how do you close a deal? Build that rapport and you know, agree to buy a property. Like a lot of people really confuse it, confuse it, but like the easiest way to close a deal is just build a rapport with the seller and ask them how much they want to sell the property for. Hey, I'll buy it, then write up a contract. Like, guys, like I said in the beginning, guys overcomplicate this. Keep it simple. Agent says, love what you do for us. I love what you guys do for me. Appreciate it. Uh, running for Congress, vote for We Buy Houses. Uh, <laughs> love it. Uh, try clicking on the link for your mastermind on Facebook and it says the page is available. I know this is not related to cold calling, but just curious. Um, go to uh, try incognito tab. It should be there. Um, the only ones that can't find are people that no, you're not blocked. No. Uh, try to hop on there. Um, I'm doing about an hour in Atlanta. I did my first cold calls. Awesome. Keep up. Keep it up. So transactional funding, it depends on the deal. If it's double closing, you get some of the money for the double closing for like that hour you actually own the asset for. Um, but if you're going to actually close on it, I, I, I would not be closing with transactional funding. And then it depends. Actually, wait. Now that... So if you can get hard money, but for transaction for the double closing, you just kind of have to go back to that partner and actually show that you have the deal locked up and you're doing the double closing. It, it should be pretty simple the way you're doing it. Lee says, I've tried to get open code violation lists, but I've been told they don't provide lists. I can only look up an address. Am I looking for the wrong info? Go to try to speak to the manager and see how you actually can get it. Uh, or fi file a FOIA request. Best market to wholesale in Florida. Hmm. That's a good one. It's always changing. Um, I think right now it's still Pensacola. I still, I still think the whole panhandle is probably the best in Florida. Get Michael, get that screen saver out of here. Mr. I shot twice in the second half. All right. All right. I want to hear it from you. <laughs> Jarrett, what is up? Uh, hey, Zach, when I send the cash buyer the assignment contract, do I put the amount I have the house under contract for? Um, I already answered this one. Uh, yes, because they're buying the contract from you. Um, I don't really care Like uh, for the gurus. I, I, I'm here to help the education, not the guru industry. Now, if I put the, all the gurus out of business... I don't mind, but I, I'm just honestly trying to go out here and just change the way people are learning wholesaling Celtics in four. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's, 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 let's chill out here. Okay. Let's chill out. All right. I'm just, I, I, I'm assuming you're from Boston and I can respect that. <laughs> It's the only way I can respect you. <laughs> Stop being a little Stephen A. Smith over here. Um, what about a property that is in uh, uh, partition? Partition? The seller wants to sell, but the relatives... Oh, a portion. Okay, the A was an O. Whatever. Uh, the seller wants to sell, but the relatives have to sign off. They don't have to communicate with each other. They could sell a piece of the real estate, but you're, you're going to need everyone on there. See, I respect Steve. Steve's Steve's Massachusetts, fine, fine. We'll deal with him. And we'll deal with Steve uh, week one for the Dolphins. We'll deal with him. We'll, 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 we'll deal, deal with him there. <laughs> um, uh, Baton Rouge is a good market, yeah. Uh, Joe said, when I joined the military when I was in my early 20s, now that was very scary, picking up a phone and calling somebody shouldn't be that. Joseph, dude. Thank you for your service. And you should know this more than anyone. Um, you know, joining the military and potentially giving your life up for this country is way, 
and there's not even the same you're not in the same galaxy okay as of courageous as that is okay um, i'm not comparing the two at all i joined the military is way i've never been in the military i have plenty of friends that are in there um respect to everyone that's in the military those are the real courageous people. Okay. Those are the real people give, putting their lives out for the line and, and changing the world. So, um, all my respect to the military, but, uh, Joseph says that right though, you know, uh, huge difference. You know, I, I think I'm also going to tell you that, um, it's just a different perspective. I think perspective is really important. You know, you know, like I think, I think you go to a vet, you know, that fought for this country or just, uh, just any vet in general and say, I'm scared of cold call. And then you go to an event and like, are you kidding me? You know what I had to go like, you know what, why I've had to do what I put up for the line. Uh, it's a completely different conversation and I can't relate to that. Uh, so I'll let those people speak on that, but I just, from the outside looking in, tell me if I'm wrong, but that is a completely different realm. Okay. So I think it's all about perspective to a point, you know? Does Florida have a state approved contract for real estate? Yeah, they have uh, Florida bar contracts. They have Florida real estate contracts. They got a million types. Uh, state approved is basically approved from the Florida bar or the Florida Realtors Association. So we're going to ask here, is there any restrictions for felons? And this is always an interesting one for wholesaling, but I've said this before and I'll say it again. Wholesaling real estate does not discriminate. You can be any age, any gender. You can be a felon. It doesn't matter. Real estate does not discriminate when it comes to wholesaling. Now, if you're a real estate, now if you're a real estate agent, yes, it discriminates. If you're in the mortgage industry, of course it discriminates. That's why I love wholesaling real estate. You make the most money and they don't discriminate. You don't have to get a college degree. It, you don't have to even get a GED. It doesn't matter your education level. It, it matters how much, it honestly matters how much effort you put in this business. And the only thing that discriminates in wholesaling is the effort you put in. And that's why I love it so much. And wholesaling does not discriminate. And I love it, you know. Good question though. Um... Okay, so this is a really good one too. So like, you know, should I get a cash buyer before I get a deal right or all this stuff? Now we're going to ask here, should I get a title company before I start looking for deals? Yes. Go to freewholesaling.com. We sort of break down exactly how to find the right title company there. Um, John says, how do I come up with the actual assignment fee amount on the deal? So figure out what type of assignment fee to put on the deal is kind of weird to a point, you know, Sometimes you make a thousand, sometimes you make 50,000. It, the cool part about it is here's the simplest way to figure out how much your assignment fee should be. This is a free market. So I always just try to get the lowest price out of the seller. And then I bid up with a cash buyer and wherever the highest cash buyer price is going to be, that's usually where my assignment fee is. It's a free market to the end. It's a free market at the end of the game. So let's say, for example, I bought a gallon of gas. Okay. And I try to sell that gallon of gas for a dollar, right? I, I put in a nice jerry can. And I try to sell it on the street for a dollar. And you could prove I actually got it from like the gas station. Cash buyers for quote unquote gas are going to like buy it for a dollar, right? And people love that, right? So, hey, I, I guess the market's okay with that. Now, if I try selling it for 50 bucks, no one's going to want to buy it. So it's it sort of figuring it out. Like, and if I bought that gas for like a dollar 50, right? Two bucks. You know, some I'll give you four bucks for it. Oh, I'll give you five. And then like no one gives me one five. Well, probably five minus two, three dollars. That's what the market will give. And at the end of the day, we're in a free market. We're selling real estate contracts. That's how you figure out how much your assignment fee should be. Let the market decide. That's sort of how I figure out on my house flips how much this property should sell for, right? I sort of put like a crazy price on there and I let people bid it up or bid it down and just let the free market decide. At the end of the day, you're not going to figure out perfectly how much your property is going to sell to a cash buyer without actually talking to a bunch of cash buyers. You're guesstimating it to a point. Um, error. Zach, can I actually wholesale from outside the United States? Yes, you can. I'm telling you right now, you can wholesale 
anywhere in the entire world. You can do it virtually. That's the point of virtual wholesaling. You can wholesale anywhere. I know about micro wholesaling. I know how to get a deal in a contract. Guys, I've had wholesalers from Trinidad and Tobago do deals. Actually, people from Serbia doing deals. Um, England, Mexico, people from the Philippines doing deals, Canada. Guys, wholesaling real estate is truly international. The only thing in common is you're wholesaling in the United States. But yeah, you're fine by that. And I get people asked all the time. I'm going to lose followers by saying this, but I'm going to be completely honest. There's people that say, oh, Zach, don't help anyone who's not in the United States learn wholesaling real estate. We got to keep everything in the U.S. economy. We, we, we need to only have Americans, American citizens learn. Like I'm just, guys, at the end of the day, if you know people that are immigrants, if you have family that are immigrants, right? And people that started from nothing. I, I want to give everyone. Also, I've had people do deals from Nigeria, uh, Cameroon. Um, what? Al, not Algeria. I, someone's watching this from Algeria, but uh, someone from Tanzania. But I don't think they've done deals yet. But like, I know at least three or four African countries where people are doing deals too. Um, a lot of people like over there, like they don't have any options, you know? And if they can make forty, fifty thousand dollars in one month, why not give them the chance? You know, and a lot of people might get get upset at me for saying this, but at the end of the day, I, I want to help everyone that need that wants help. Um, I'm a human being, and if, if someone's reaching out for help, I'm going to help them out for free. And maybe I feel a need because maybe that kid who has internet access, who's eighteen years old, that might not have food to feed his family. And I'm the only person giving free information on the internet about wholesaling real estate. Maybe that helps someone out that can learn. Um, I, I've talked to so many people that got their first deal living like Jamaica and Haiti, and they'd know their options. They're not going to pay $6,000 to learn wholesaling, right? And I was the only person that would teach it for free. Um, I want to be that beacon of light for them. And I, I, I'm, I get, hate me all you want uh, for helping people international, but. I want to help the whole world out and Hey, you know, you know, sue me if you want, make, make me upset, but I want to help everyone. Brazil in the house. Love it. My mean say, see Anthony is, he knows what's up, you know, let's get, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. It's some Canadian flags. I love it. I love it. Uh, let's see. Can you uh, can you help me pull code violations in my county? If you want to pull code violations, all you got to do is go to your local county's code enforcement department, ask for all open code violations for the past 30 days. My favorite ones are like tall grass, structural damage, and like mold or mildew outside the property. That's what you got to do when you call the pull the code violations. Now, if they say, oh, we don't have any code violations, try to speak to the manager or do what we call a FOIA request. It's your request for that public information. They are government entities and you are a private tax paying citizen. So you do have a right for this information. They're really good wholesaling lists and I've done lots of deals from them. I make hundreds of thousands of dollars per year wholesaling the code violation list. Just remember, the harder it is to pull the list, usually the better it is because less wholesalers can get a hold of that list. I'm with Rich. I'll bring Texas fajitas and steaks. <laughs> I love it. I'm getting hungry. Um, let's see here. Hey, Zach, I want to start wholesaling here in Baltimore, but I don't know where to start. Start drawing for dollars. That's probably your best option starting out in this business. Uh, Jim Rohn. R-O-H-N. Rohn. He's the OG before everyone. Uh, also, Bob Proctor. Shout out to those guys. But um, Earl Nightingale. Um, everything your favorite YouTuber or influencer says, they get from those guys. The people that quote unquote coin terms, they get it from a lot of other people. Those are the OGs that like thought of this stuff, you know. Let's see where we're at here. Hey, Zach, I'm starting, to, I'm starting to course. had a few questions. When it comes to looking for a property, how do you know in a timely manner if it's even worth your time? You got to ask the four questions and see if they truly have motivation. 
if I'm talking to a seller, I want to figure out if it's worth my time or not. The best thing really to do is just ask questions, see if they're motivated or not. If they're not motivated, it's not worth it. Rich says, if I'm in your city, would you be down to hang out so I can learn some game? I got lunch. Uh, Rich, I'm going to be honest with you. I get like five or 10 people in my city every day asking me to go for lunch. I'm going to be honest. Um, a third dollar lunch doesn't entice me uh, for an hour of my time. Um, I wholesale real estate and then I'll spend a couple hours when I'm done wholesaling talking about it for you guys for free. But I mean, I'd rather go live for an I am just being completely honest, Rich. Like I'm saying this from the bottom in the nicest way possible. I would rather go live for an hour during lunch and help thousands of people than help one person out on a lunch. Now, is that selfish? I don't think so. Um, you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one all you want, but that's sort of the way I look at it. You know, I might do a meetup. Me and Rick might do one. Um, but I'm not, um, I'm not like trying to be this guru influencer type guy or gal, um, that goes to all these events. Try, like I just, I want to give the information for free and have you take action. Um, and that, that's the way I sort of look at it. So, um, probably not, but Hey, now you want to tell me a dolphins game? Probably not. Cause I, I don't have dolphins games, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> South Florida is a good market. So we're going to ask here about the South Florida market. Decent market, you know, not, not the craziest market in, in the world, not the best, but I still do. Deal. I did a $70,000 uh, deal in West Palm Beach. Uh, put that in the uh, vlog. So a lot of big deals in South Florida still. So if the mom passed away and the daughter wants to sell me the house, she has to go through probate first. So can I streamline the process for her and how long does it take? You, most states, Technically, you can actually buy the property while it's in probate. It's just kind of a uh, process. Uh, but let me know what state you're in. But yes, you can streamline the process. All the probate stuff's at freewholesaling.com. Uh, so that's where I'd be sort of learning it. A lot of the MLS prices are dropping in my area. What is a good guideline for finding ARV with price fluctuating so much? Um, with, I mean, if ARVs are... Depends what area. So if you're in a high area i guess so but it's still how much a cash buyer is willing to pay for a house like that's what you have to go to at the end of the day uh dan says how do you feel about wholesaling luxury homes found a place that looks like a wreck vacant pre-foreclosure but it's a neighbor that's multi-million dollar homes um if you at the end of the day Again, it's a free market. If somebody wants to sell for a discount for the speeding convenience of cash, then it's fine. It, it honestly just depends. Um, but yeah, that, that's honestly what I can tell you. But yeah, I just, I've done it like those million dollar type homes. Uh, but yeah, I, I would probably just try to see if they want to sell for a discount. If not, then hey, just the real question is, if you're asking for permission to take action, take action, right? Coastal Bend gets plenty of people, Albert. You're fine. Uh, when we have MAO calculated, is that the max amount we're able to offer the seller? Yes. Oliver says, when I was on Rust, there's a guy called Flipped with Rick. I saw him on Rust and I'm on a call with him right now. He flips houses like you. <laughs> no, I, I haven't... Um, I haven't played Rust on Modern Warfare 2 in a while. I should get back into it. Uh, my gamer tag is not Zach in, flip with Rick, flip with Zach. It's none of that stuff. Um, Y'all wouldn't know what it is if I was in the lobby with you guys. I don't, I, I'm not micing it up. So, <laughs> uh, no. You, you know, though. I should put my Steam on, these, on, you guys, uh, on this for you guys, but... Um, when dealing with a pre foreclosure seller with op options, do we have a wholesaler fix the problem? Oh, what options do we have? We can help sell them before the property goes up for auction. I think that's pretty cool. And, uh, that's probably the best option we have to help. Uh, so just understand that too. 
Hi, what is up? So I'm just Jason with criminals says it's been time you've done. I haven't double closed the Lord assignment fee. Um, the biggest one's about 50 K I'm double closed. I've done a JV where the JV guy was making 80. Um, and he didn't double close, but I, my cash buyer freaked out, but I made a good, pr pretty, pretty penny off of it. No, I, I, I just, I feel like the ease of it is way better. So Zach, I've already been selling that as a mobile home without the warranty deed. If they don't have a deed, um, you can always get a new one. I'm assuming the land's owned underneath it. If it's not, maybe not the best deal. And it says, how much time do we get the cash buyer to deposit the EMD? Uh, about probably the weekend, right? Or like three or four days. It kind of depends. Uh, the deal seems good, but I'm trying to do a double close. So don't know if I should pay the close. Put it out of your assignment fee. That, that's probably the best advice you can have. Adrian Santos, been trying to pull the government list, but they give me a hard time. That's the point. The harder it is to pull the list, that means less wholesalers in your area actually pulling that list, which is the best thing you can do. Oh my gosh. Adrian, you have to be doing this, okay? Um, Bro, you actually need... I'm telling you right now, man, the harder it is to find a list, the easier it is to get a deal off that list once you finally get it. Sellers demanding a $5,000 EMD. That is literally all the money I have. I know I can get it back, but if it, uh, they come after me illegally, I can't sell it. Now, 100 bucks, that's what I do. And if you want to list out, if you want to list with a realtor, then do that. But no, don't do a $5,000 one. Um, yeah, people wholesale in Puerto Rico. I'm not the expert on it. And I don't talk about Puerto Rican wholesaling because it's not a good market. Um, I have a person who is in pre-foreclosure, owes 133000 plus interest. ARV is just cosmetic touches. MAO will be around 140 Seller wants 165 and he needs to get rid of it. Here's the thing. Okay. Um, it's the way you're kind of talking about it and the way you're describing it, but you're saying he needs to sell and he wants to sell it for too much he doesn't need to sell it i'm just being honest if he wants too much for it then he can go list it with a realtor and that's the way you sort of have to look at it if he needs to sell but he needs to sell for over what the thing's worth then he doesn't need to sell it and that's where sort of the logic you have to be looking at detroit's finest <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Alexandra says, I got a list of property delinquencies. What marketing would be your marketing plan for those? Uh, my marketing plan for people that delinquent on their taxes would probably be SMS text blasting and reverse drawing for dollars. That would probably be my favorite one. That's where you stick those yellow sticky notes on their house and see if they actually want to sell it. JNL says, what if I... What if I met an older guy that is a world chair and wait, is a world choir champ? And from talking to him, he told his son is kicking him out of the house. It's a world chair. I don't know what a world chair is. Uh, Zach. Oh, in a wheelchair. Okay. I, why do I have to play detective on these comments? Uh, his son is kicking him out of the house. Um, like I, I know you want to help this, like if you can't, you can try to help, but that, that'd be from doing charity. I mean, if you can't buy it, try to talk to the owner and, and see how you can see the situation. All right. Answer that one. What if EMD is 2,500? Quite. Yeah. I make sure EMD is like a hundred bucks. A thousand is the most I would do. 
Um, yes, Filipino uh, VAs for cold calling. Yes. Dakota, what is up, Dakota, says, I'm sort of new to this, but I have a general idea. I've spotted a few properties while drawing for dollars, and I want to pull the trigger on cold calling them. Is there anything I need to absolutely have established? Well, you need to have your script established. So use the three-step script I did. I want are the owner and are they interested and then motivation, condition, time, and price. Then get off the call from there. If you have that established, I, I think you're going to be fine. Um, just a general walkthrough of the whole selling process. Basically, putting a property under contract, then selling it for a profit. Like Just understanding how the marketing works, the whole process. I think you should be fine on there. Sandra says, I've seen for sale by owner fire damage on Zillow. They're still asking market. Yeah, that's why you have to go to the fire, basically go to the fire department and get that list. If they're already listing it, they probably want too much for it. MJJ Smith Criminal says, what's the most and least you've made on a fire damage property? Least is like four or five grand. The most is probably like 35. Like I haven't made a ton on a fire damage. Uh, no, 50,000, but it technically doesn't count. Uh, cause it was just like a microwave fire, but I'll count it. Like I, it wasn't a, it wasn't a fire damage. It was from a high equity list. So depends. Can you have a buyer deposit a non-refundable EMB at the close of escrow? No. Awesome. All right, let's go here. So someone says, how do you answer, how do you fill out a purchase agreement? Go to freewholesaling.com. It is literally all in there. I have my step-by-step -step on it. Because I'm talking about cold calling today, I'm probably not going to break that down today. Let's see here. Uh, ever, whenever it says, who said wholesaling in Puerto Rico and is a bad market? There are no bad markets, Zach, just bad negotiators. I'm in and out of Puerto Rico wholesalers and making it happen on an island. How many wholesalers are making a million dollars a year wholesaling doing a sound of contracts in the island of Puerto Rico? Let me know. Love to know that answer. I want to know how many. Good. Big population Puerto Rico. Love to know. I haven't really like that. That's the way I look at it. You know, like there's not a lot of guys scaling up a good market there. Guys, guys are flipping. Guys and gals are flipping, but sure. I uh, just started watching your driving to San Diego and super excited. Awesome. Uh, third day challenge is going to be uh, put on here. I'm not being, I like nothing wrong with Puerto Rico. I'm just letting you know that not a lot of people are doing well there. Um, like wholesaling wise. Now you can prove me like prove me wrong, but hold on. Let me see the uh, population. Puerto Rico has a population of three point one nine four million people, um, and Hawaii's got one point four two. I know probably ten people in Hawaii that are making around a million a year. In wholesaling, I don't know one in Puerto Rico, so that's that's the way I look at it. Hey, I could be ignorant and wrong on this, but I just don't see a lot of people doing it. Um, so yeah, and the people that are real estate investing in wholesaling in Puerto Rico, most likely are just doing it for the tax haven, not because they're moving there just to wholesale. I mean, if you look at a chart of the population of Puerto Rico, it is down like it's going down um makes real estate less valuable now some areas with the new act they put in like some areas doing really well luxury wise but it's kind of all over the board uh where's the longest you've held a contract so long as i've ever held a contract was uh two years and I just, that was a crazy probate situation. Um, not being able to find a buyer, probably two months. Um, that's because the property is just too high.
Sean says, I spoke with you and Rick last week. I live in an expensive local market in San Diego. Why do you advise people not to wholesale in an expensive market? Isn't that just more profit? Sean, there, there's two reasons why. Number one, go and find people who are wholesaling in San Diego that are doing really like the amount of people making over 250000 a year wholesaling in San Diego is actually kind of small. Wholesaling like assignment fee specific. Now, people are flipping real estate in San Diego fine, but like, you just, it's a very saturated market. There's a lot of wholesalers and there's not a lot of deals. And most people who own a property over a million dollars don't want to sell it at a discount. People own it for like 150, 200, they'll sell for a little discount. They don't care. And that's sort of to the point too, but it's the regulations in San Diego, the amount of cash buyers. Um, at the end of the day, you just look at where people are doing deals and where the most assignments are being done. And they're not as much San Diego as in like Dallas, for example. ARVs have a huge, and also transactional fees are a lot higher. It's it's different everywhere, but you just got to look at the macro market. Uh, Joey says, are water shutoff lists a good list to start cold calling or what list do you recommend to start on? Uh, I like water shutoffs. So you can do that. Let's see here. Ever speak to the neighbors first to gain intel on empty pro all the time, all the time. Love it. Um, to a point, um, should I take action on understanding fully? It should take you a less than a couple hours to understand wholesaling. Um, go through freewholesaling.com, go through that and then take action. That, that's honestly what I, I'd say, but to a point, yes. Just says first time here, where should we post questions? Hey, post it there, right? Uh, YouTube's where most people are at, but yeah, my girlfriend told me, I can't do wholesaling because it's a pyramid scheme. I love this question. So let, let's let, let's break this down. This is a fun one. Let's 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 show a pyramid scheme. Let's look at the chart here. Oh, let me share my screen here. Hold on, where is it? Pyramid scheme. Look, I'm not saying anything mean about your girlfriend. But your girlfriend doesn't understand what a pyramid scream is. Now, let's go break this off. Pyramid scheme. Let's 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 go off the definition of a pyramid scheme. Okay, a pyramid scheme is a fraudulent system of making money based on recruiting an ever increasing number of investors. The initial promoters will recruit investors, who is turn recruit more investors, and scheme is called a pyramid because each level of the number of incre investors increase. So. What investor do I have in wholesaling real estate? Do I rely on more investors? Levels on it? No. You are looking to buy properties and then sell the contract on that. There's no, uh, I don't get like, I, you don't understand what a pyramid scheme is. Dan says, ever feel weird cold calling, cold calling the weekends? Not really. I don't do it. Um, Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. If it works for you, but sure. Um, you know, so not reading on here, guys. You got to go on YouTube, flip with Rick or Zach in on YouTube to get the questions answered. Um, that's where I can kind of put it on the screen for everyone to really see it. <clears throat> All righty. Uh, code enforcement list is not public. I need to speak to the manager and she told me the same thing. So, uh, Chantel, you spoke to the manager. Did you speak to the person? So is that, is that the person who's head of code enforcement or do they just say they're a or they're in a manager? You got to speak to the person who's head of code enforcement and then speak to the city attorney. Hey Zach, you and your da dad, bro, love you guys. What are your thoughts on working with a company, uh, versus being independent? Um, I'm my own company. Um, that, that's honestly what I could tell you. That's the way you sort of have to be looking at it. Let's 
Let's see here. Let's see. No, be your own market. That's that's honestly what I'd sell, tell you. Brady, what is up, Brady? Uh, how long does it take to get your first and second deal? Trying to decide if I should quit my night job and hold on because it may take longer than I expect. It could take you three days. It could take you three years, right? It comes, it's not, not luck to a point, but it's just how many sellers you talk to and how quote unquote lucky until you find someone who wants to sell the property for a discount. Um, I got my first one in 30 days and my second one in 60. Uh, so good for me, right? But honestly, you need to market and find how much it takes you to get the first deal. And then the only way you're going to know how long it takes to get your second deal is just by doing it. So that's all, honestly all I can tell you. John says, can you describe how you scaled your growth? What are your first key pieces of tool you invested? How many are, are, are bleh, how many on our, are on the on your acquisitions team. So we got people for virtual and then for physical. What I tell you is just go to freewholesaling.com. I kind of break down that whole system on there. You scale up the three parts of wholesaling, which is marketing, acquisition, and disposition. Marketing got VAs do the cold calling from the SMS text blasting, all that. Acquisitions start with one agent who literally just goes out there on the properties, get them under contract. Dispo, someone who sell the deal. Basically, they're my transaction coordinator too. Now you can get people who are doing basically only virtual or you have like one or two acquisitions people on there. Uh, but at the end of the day, it depends on your team. First hire has to be marketing, then dispo, then acquisitions. Uh, two acquisition agents is probably best for most people. Um, and if you need more than two, then you're probably doing more than 10 million. I, I would say I love tacos. Taco Tuesday. I should make some tacos tonight for the heat game. I have to run the store. Get some tacos. Make them super spicy. <laughs> Does someone's immigration status should be uh should be a reason not to get no. Your immigration status does not matter. You can be a citizen in another country, still wholesale. Can you wholesale a house to a whole yeah, technically? But they won't be buying the house. They'll be wholesaling that. So it's probably not the best. Third one, own a trucking business, but I'm tired of driving, going on wholesaling till I win. Keep it up. You got this. Let's see here. Uh, seller wants 85000 for all seven lots in Polk County. Found a qualified title company today. This is my first deal. Talk to a seller today. Need to get contract. Not sure how to pull all that together. Go to freewholesaling.com. That's how you get my free contract. It's all in there. Go to freewholesaling.com. That's how you get my free contract. Now, you're asking exactly how to negotiate from there. You got to get... If the seller wants 85, find out how much the MAO is going to be on it and how much a cash buyer is going to pay for it and then get the best price from there, you know? That's the way I would do it. What are your quick qualifying questions? Uh, motivation, condition, time frame, price. What was that five? Motivation, condition, time frame, price. Motivation, how much they, how much, uh, blah. Motivation is uh, why they're looking to sell the property. Condition, can you tell me a little about the property, the AC roof, repairs on it. Time frame, when they're looking to sell it, and then price, how much they need to sell the property for. Uh, those are the four qualifying questions. Speechless. I'm speechless from this free mentoring uh, ship session. Awesome. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I agree 100%, Joseph, there. Uh, is there a way to see which title companies are doing the most closings? Um, you can't look in their pocketbooks too much, and most of that information is not public. Uh, but I think go to Facebook groups and you figure out which is for wholesalers. They'll tell you. I'll probably be the best one for you there. Let's see here. Uh, the contract does not have to be state approved. 
Can I wholesale from outside the US? Yes, of course. Is it a good idea to pull from PropStream as well as government list? Yes. It depends on the time, marketing schedule, and budget, but yes. All right. So if you want to be put on Jacob, go to freewholesaling.com or ask your questions on the YouTube channel in the bio. Let's see here. Being a fan of them since we're undefeated. All right, John. I love it. <laughs> Celtics in four. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Orford and Smart out for the game one. Yeah, right. Let me see. Don't be pulling my heartstrings. Oh, oh, they are out. Huh. That's not... I'd rather beat the Celtics when they're all healthy, um, but whatever. Better for the Heat, I guess. Jose is from Miami. Um. I mean, drive for dollars. That'd probably be my best advice for you. Ryan, what is up? Uh, Ryan and Caleb, what is up, guys? They're awesome. Uh, what's up, Zach? Always thanks for the good vibes and even better content. Appreciate it. Uh, keep it up there in Michigan. They're awesome. Dan says, I want to help disenfranchise people in my community utilizing abandoned properties in my neighborhood, but I'm also one of those people that needs help. Danny, we're living in a capitalist society, uh, man. So at the end of the day, I like, I mean, I, I never really grew up in a quote unquote area that like had a bunch of abandoned houses. So I'm coming from a different perspective per se, but if I'm wholesaling community that has abandoned houses and maybe it's a rougher part of town or something, and I find a cash buyer, guess what the cash buyer is going to do? They're going to fix the boarded up windows. They're going to mow the grass. They're going to fix the property up, put a new roof on it, and then they're going to sell it to a family that's going to live in there. Uh, pretty much a stable family that gets a loan too. So it's like, I'm not, I think it's a win-win for everyone, you know? Let's see here. S Corporate LLC. Um, if you got, I've, I actually like um, S Corps because you can do specific write-offs. They might switch. Um, when you make, if you're making over under 300, if you're married, it's good. If you're making under two, if you're making under 150 in wholesaling a year, S corps are the way to go. Now, if you're making like millions, like I am, uh, C corps the best one. Might change. You never know, right? Like they're all might change, but. Getting asked to attack, how long would it take to go through your entire course? Um, Hey, if you want to go crazy in a day and watch everything at 4x speed, you can get through it in a day, right? What's up, bro? Uh, Inland Empire in the house. Uh, what's up, Zach? I'm at work, but taking action prior to work and doing a lunch break. Uh, co calling, drawing for dollars, a list from yesterday, along with water shot off. Bro, you're taking action. I love it. You always hop on, you always talk to us one on one. Uh, love it, man. Awesome. Taco Fest in San Diego. Whoa. That'd be kind of cool. Or just go to Tijuana, man. <laughs> I think I'd rather go to San Diego. Uh, when you double close, are you giving the hard cash or everyone get paid out the same time to the title company? So sometimes you can use the cash buyer's funds on a double closing. Um, that's pretty cool. And pretty like there, there's different ways they're called. I'm pretty sure for specifically, it's a double closing and escrow they're called. Uh, they got different ways they're doing it, but um, there's ways you can go around that. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Uh, so even the heirs don't want to sell the property and the PR does, does it go to the PR's favor? It's in the PR's favor, but they, you can't, you can buy someone out of their portion of the real estate sometimes. But at, at the end of the day though, I'm telling you right, you can't force a, people to own the house to sell it. Uh, Vasilian says, so even if the heirs, yeah, no. Uh, just trying to leverage the title company with cash buyers. What's the best way to go about it? We've closed several deals there and now referrals as well. Uh, trying to leverage our title company with cash buyers. So find all the wholesaling friendly ones. So you're wholesaling. So I don't think it's going to be an issue with the costs for you. Um, 
if you're trying to leverage your title company with the cash buyer, so you're not going to get the deal unless you go through my cat without, you're not going to get the deal unless you're going with my title company. That's probably the best one you can do. If you want to get cash buyers from the title company, you can basically just ask. And if you're doing a lot of deals, they'll probably give it to you. Um, so all I know on this, this is my first day where I start. Go to the bottom here, freeholesling.com. That is exactly how you're doing it. That's exactly how to get it going. i um, telling you right now, straight up, freeholesling.com is where you have everything you need to know about wholesaling real estate. So guys, go to freeholesling.com. That is cold calling start to finish. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Forgot to announce it. I'm, sh I'm sharing how to do a free auto dialer tomorrow for cold calling. Yeah, free auto dialer. That's tomorrow. It's going to be exciting. So guys, I'll break down tomorrow live.